all right now this is another chapter vibration right so in vibration basically it's a one subject like in mechanical engineering and all uh, but in our uh, grade syllabus it's a chapter okay so if you thoroughly if you go then it is as i told it is one subject no? mechanical vibration it is one subject so for that reason i'm telling it is not necessary to go through all the uh, uh, topics one by one it is not necessary as per gate whatever the topics uh, they are touching they are asking question from which topic that topic i will discuss you and as i mentioned already uh, in earlier classes also like derivation all derivation not important no whatever the important thing that i will tell i will tell you and whatever the derivation suppose is important like to understand the thing that that also i will do but full derivation like from start to end not necessary to do no? that final result you should know and that application of that final result you should know assumptions for that result you should know how to apply that uh, final result that you should know that is important all right so <clears throat> now <clears throat> okay we'll go for it first so like kind if you check the types of the vibration and what is the mean of vibration that very simple so vibration is basically suppose a system which is already in uh, equilibrium position okay a one system which is in equilibrium position simple i will give example so you will understand domestic example okay this is the pan you can say that pan uh, here no? no you just basic example you just try to understand you will automatically understand the thing okay this is the pan no? all right this is the stroke okay? and here is you are making t and all okay if this is the empty span okay and uh, if it is empty span you just hit by a spoon or any uh, kitchen item you just hit on this span and once you hit this span so you may get that sound okay why that sound and you may get that sound that is okay one thing second thing if you hold this span tightly then that sound you may not get if you leave, hit the, this span by a spoon okay and leave it then you may get that sound but if you hit by the spoon to this span and hold it tightly then you may not get is that sound that reason is very simple it's vibration all right it's a vibration only okay it's a vibration one now <clears throat> so what you what do you mean by vibration so vibration is just like a, a motion okay because naked eyes cannot see that uh, why this sound we are getting uh, by this span so the simple reason is the vibration because of the vibration only you are uh, getting sound simple so how that vibration you just simple another example i will give this is suppose one cantilever strip okay you you give the load you give the load to at the free end of this uh, cantilever and and you immediately you remove the load okay so this strip will move in this way to and fro motion to and fro means like this and finally it will get initial so again there also you may get sound why because of this vibration so it's kind of the motion okay that vibration is nothing but it's a motion to and fro motion to and what is what do you mean by to and fro this is the suppose origin point so this side motion and this side motion this side motion this motion to and fro i mean this is the center point this side motion at the same time this side motion so this to and fro motion called as a 
a vibration okay so a body is said to be vibrate if it has two and pro motion and because of that obviously frequency you may get right and that will convert into sound okay that energy will be converted into sound and obviously sound is one kind of energy so that you may get the sound very simple okay so this vibration basically uh, we have a three types na huh? free damped and forced vibration free damped and forced vibration okay what do you mean by free vibration or called natural vibration also or free vibration or natural vibration so so what is the mean of it it is very simple as i mentioned uh check as i mentioned suppose uh this is the cantilever okay on this cantilever if you apply the load and immediately remove the load so it will start vibrating it will start to and fro motion like this initially you had applied load and you remove the load okay so once you remove the load but still it is vibrating then it is called free vibration or natural vibration whatever the frequency you may get it will be natural frequency you understood what is the uh, free vibration very simple there is no continuous force acting on the system you may apply load on the system and immediately you remove the load but still that body is what vibrating or still that motion is what there to and fro motion is there then it is called as a free vibration what is the mean of damped vibration damped vibration means okay like uh, suppose this cantilever is what is start vibrating to and fro motion started but here you have used the spring system and you fixed this so this is spring will try to get initial condition as soon as possible because once this is this uh, strip will go down side okay because that motion will be up and down no? up and down so once it will come down side so this spring will try to uh, oppose that motion so immediately it will come to its own initial position yes or no or you can say this side also is spring we have no? so so immediately this strip if you apply load it will go like up and down but it automatically it will come to original position why because both side spring will be there and this spring will try to oppose that motion so this type of vibration called as a damped damped vibration means damp in the sense to eliminate huh? to eliminate or to dissipate that meaning is same so the kind of vibration where vibration is what going to dissipate or vibration is what going to eliminate okay gradually means slowly slowly that type of vibration called as a damped vibration you may say like damper we are using damper so damper is what basically used to damp out the vibration and what is the mean of damp out damp vibration means very simple to 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 try to dissipate uh, to to try to eliminate uh, the vibration okay slowly slowly that uh, that type of vibration called damp vibration what do you mean by forced vibration forced vibration means like uh, simple this is the what cantilever and in this cantilever continuous force you are applying so if you apply the force because this is the strip this is the uh, why i am giving the cantilever example because many times many places you might be have seen in your uh, college time like in lab and all or generic also sometimes you have seen uh, this type of the vibration like maybe uh, suppose this is the wall and over this wall suppose this is iron rod is there okay long iron rod is there here this is the long iron rod sometimes you may apply the load here or upward or downward uh, downward and leave it so automatically this rod may go up and down up and down motion like this so this is the practical examples i'm telling you okay now but this force is whatever the force you are applying at the frame it is continuous okay if you apply the load so it is continuous hmm? so this type of the vibration okay 
called as a, a force vibration. Uh, the force you are acting, you are applying continuously. Uh, that continuous force is what acting. Okay. Uh, now, simple example I will give. Suppose this is the what bucket. Inside this bucket, we have water. All right. Now, <clears throat> here, some uh, iron rod, or suppose your hand is there and you just rotate your hand inside the bucket. So, what will happen? What will happen? Simple water will try to rotate. So, that shape you may get like this. That water will try to rotate here. Yes or no? So, that shape you may get like this. Once water will start rotating, that shape will be like this. You remove the hand, then still that water will be rotating inside. So, still water is rotating. So, that is called free vertex. So, similarly, if you apply load and automatically remove the load, and if vibration is continuous, called the free vibration. But one thing, if you are uh, uh, here, inserting your hand here and continuously rotating your hand inside the bucket so whatever the water that water will also rotate continuously so here by your hand you are continuously applying load torque you are applying hence water is rotating so continuous rotation of your hand give the rotation to the water and water is also rotating that type continuous you are imparting the rotation to the water so continuous rotation of your hand is the symbol of uh, force vertex and in terms of vibration it will be force vibration right and if you dip your hand and uh, rotate it and remove it but still water is rotating it is called free vertex and in terms of vibration it will be free vibration i hope all three difference you might be understood you tell me you understood or not all three yes sir it is clear Yes, so <clears throat> okay. So, uh by this example, okay. This is the one example here it is given. So this is called a spring. Okay. This is called a spring. What is the nature of a spring? Can you tell the nature of a spring? Suppose this is this. What is the nature of this spring? If you apply at this end, if you are applying load in this direction, then what will be the nature of this spring? It will try to restore the shape and size. Or it will try to restore the deformation or deflection or change in length because this is the spring you hold at this in and apply the load in this direction so what will happen this spring will will change the length okay that is called deformation or it is called elongation okay or simple displacement so this spring will maybe like this like this this is spring once you apply load so it will will be, it will be like this Yes or no? Tell me, dear. Yes, sir. So it will try to restore. Restore restoring means resistance force will come and it will try to contract again because here it is elongated. That length increased. It is elongated. So it will try to contract again. It will try to get the original shape again. So it will have a restoring uh, tendency. So nature of a spring is always a restoring. So what type of force will be there in case of spring if you talk? It is a restoring force. Means it will try to regain its uh, size. See? That's the mean of it. What is the nature of damper? Okay, this is called damper. This is the spring. And this is the damper. Damper, I will, I'll show you the separate diagram. Damper is like piston cylinder arrangement. It is not exactly a piston cylinder, but yes, you can understand in that way. So you just say this is what cylinder and this is the piston. This is the piston. Okay. Here they may have a very high 
viscous fluid a high viscous fluid fluid okay suppose force is what going in this direction so this rod will go inside yes or no it will get this shape no? here so this fluid will try to oppose it but it is the smooth it is the smooth force because hydraulic fluid will be there and hydraulic a press will be a very smooth huh? so once load will be acting in downward direction so this rod will try to go inside but that time fluid will try to oppose it smoothly very smooth huh? we just think so we just think uh, this example suppose you applied load here this is the wheel so this block will go in this direction it will go in this direction but if you leave suppose this is damper is not there if you leave it then this is spring will try to reach to it will try to go in this direction but it will go very fast it will give jerk try to oppose the motion so smoothly it will go back go back tell me dear you guys are getting the concept or not say yes or no yes sir so the damper will have a resistance of the motion i mean see you just think suppose we don't have damper if you this is the block and wheel we have wheel means frictionless okay frictionless if you apply apply load in this way so this trolley will go in forward direction but if you remove the load then because of the restoring force uh, uh, stored in uh, spring this restoring force will try to get back this trolley as soon as possible so if you it if, if this trolley will go back very fast it will give jerk yes or no shock it will give so so what will happen so to eliminate that shock we will have a damper what is the concept of damper i told you once this uh, trolley will get back because of the spring so this you can say this piston or uh, just a rod will go back very fast but here we have a fluid i told you this is the diagram i had explained this is the say piston and this is the cylinder here fluid we have still if this piston very fast will go downside but this fluid will resist it very smoothly very smoothly it will resist so it will go back it's okay but very smoothly it will go back that's the reason we are using damper you know what is the mean of damper and what is the use of damper say yes or no tell me dear yes i understood me. understood no okay see in your bike and all see <clears throat> you have seen both side below the seat you have seen this rod and over the rod may you may have a spring also no over the rod you may have a spring also so basically spring and damper both if you check this is for in in our like uh, in bike we are saying shocker shocker means to absorb the shock so this system so if you check the shocker so uh, a part of this spring mechanism will have a like a, this mechanism also i mean if you check that sometimes if you go to bike mechanical mechanics and all so they may, they may remove this shocker and they may fill the fluid again so that again damper will work nicely so that in your bike and all you are getting you are getting or you are having a good shock absorber that shock absorber because of both mechanism spring and damper both so that damper i told you in your bike uh, this damper will be like this this will be a small um, uh, kind of the pipe inside that rod and uh, fluid everything will be there so that bike mechanic will what they uh, will do like he will remove the shocker and then he will again fill the fuel uh, maybe mobile and high viscosity fluid yes or no yes sir all right so it is very clear now 
okay so <clears throat> so here that uh, this is uh, the like a k this k is spring k will give the is, what is the uh, k suppose this is the spring and this is the k so this k is nothing but is spring coefficient this is called a spring coefficient and uh, we'll have a damper okay this is the damper now huh? this is the damper okay this is the damper so this damper called c which is called damping coefficient what it is called damping coefficient okay remember all right done now see so check this the here we have a continuous force so this is the force vibration force vibration here we are uh, applying the load but uh, after uh, the force there will be motion x and then you remove the force so this is the free vibration okay and here because we are having the own mass or own weight na self uh, weight because of the self weight also this in this case will have a deflection so self weight deflection also a kind of the force vibration all right and this is the force so all three we have anyway now check so a very simple simple term like time period this is the 12 fifth standard only you know time period t is equal to what it is a uh, 2 pi f na? what is the f frequency hmm? and what is t time period so 2 pi frequency f will be 1 by w angular velocity na? 2 pi by w what is the w w is nothing but it's the angular velocity hmm? radian per second all those formula you know see so tp is equal to 2 pi by w or f is equal to w by 2 pi take the formula so these are the basic formula time period is equal to t divided by 2 pi by w and uh, frequency is nothing but f is equal to 1 by time period so again w by 2 pi or here you can write w is equal to 2 pi f meaning is same the same meaning Yes, so this very basic you should know. Now, I just want to tell you this uh, F. Okay, now uh, this I will explain. Suppose uh, this is the spring mechanism. Okay, we have this is the mass m. This is the spring mechanism k. So obviously we will have a deflection in downward direction. This is also called delta. So now another diagram I will draw. so here we will get the deflection this is the deflection so k so we'll have a restoring force in upward direction what will be the restoring force k into deflection x what is the x x is the deflection so you remember f is equal to k delta i told you x is nothing but delta deflection it's your choice you can show like deflection is delta or f meaning is same similarly damping coefficient okay like uh, f is equal to k into delta for the spring so for the damper f is equal to c into v okay all right c is the damping coefficient hmm? c is the damping coefficient and v is the velocity velocity of the fluid f what is the f f is the damping force or force applied on damper okay this formula you remember for the spring like here for the spring check deformation is what x so for the spring what is the spring force restoring force k into x for the damper what is the damping force f is equal to c into v velocity hmm? what is the velocity it is distance by time 
what is the distance it is x so we can write x by t can i write x by t yes sir can i write x by t as a velocity yes distance by time what is the distance x x by t can i write x dot yes sir a dot means per unit time or divided by time so that damping force you can write f is equal to c into x dot what is the f kx for the spring f is equal to c x dot is for the damper is that clear yes okay. sir now next word is resonance it is very nice word what is the mean of resonance you know in 10th standard 12th standard physics you had seen huh? suppose uh i just think in this way uh, uh like uh, anyway okay this is what river na no? this is the river river okay all right now <clears throat> over the river this is what road huh? so obviously this is the river and this is what road okay so what you may have you may have bridge Yes or no? Let's say this is what bridge. Clear? In I'm just giving the example, twelfth standard physics example. You might be have seen that example if you recall. What was that? Suppose this is the one. army parade uh, they are marching here uh, up down they are doing like march uh, as usual march okay up down up down that leg up down up down uh, that example you have might be seen in 12th standard physics here the army parade going on uh, they are crossing the bridge uh, they are crossing the river over the bridge okay so march is what they are doing uh, leg going up Uh, all together and going down up down up down so they may have a one frequency okay they may have one frequency yes or no they may have one frequency so here because every time on same time all the uh, like a cadet uh, their legs going up and then going down up down so they may have one frequency right repeating things repeating things going on hence they have a frequency and this bridge material will also have a frequency that is called natural frequency hmm? so if this two this frequency and this frequency will match then the amplitude of this material okay because whatever the material it is used to make the bridge that material i am telling because natural frequency is what of that material only if i am saying natural frequency of the bridge then what is the mean mean is what material we have used in the bridge that material natural frequency and the frequency generated uh, due to march of the cadets so this frequency and this frequency if it is matched then it is called a resonance hope you understood okay then what will happen in this situation it's very simple uh, because of the resonance what will happen it's a thing like uh, whatever the amplitude of the um, material having natural frequency that material amplitude automatically increases now see what is the mean of it suppose this is the bridge material uh, bridge materials natural frequency okay now this is the uh, cadet 
they have generated due to mark that frequency is this one and it is matched at the same time it is high at the same time it is low means it is matched but in this case both frequency this is f2 and this is what f1 so the another plot you may draw like this so this amplitude increases or not so this amplitude amplitude increases so this amplitude is the combined effect of the both because frequency is matched so amplitude will be added so this amplitude added it means this bridge will start oscillation it will start oscillation okay and if it will start oscillation so they may have a chance to to break the bridge because of that that of oscillation amplitude increases hence they may have chance to break the uh, bridge because of this resonance effect you understood what is the resonance now this example we had seen in 12 system physics yes sir all right so this is resonance so why we are talking about resonance and all why because we'll have a vibration and i told you vibration means oscillation about one point this uh, or this very example simple example pendulum uh, this is the original position and this to and fro motion of the pendulum yes or no so obviously frequency will come so that's the reason we have to talk resonance also i think it is clear now then yes sir anyway okay so longitudinal vibration okay so <clears throat> this longitudinal is very simple this is the very simple simple term you just uh, suppose this is the spring system if you apply load in this direction okay and if you remove the load then a spring may vibrate in this way you will apply load so it will go in forward direction if you remove the load it will go back huh? but if you remove the load permanently then automatically it will oscillate in this way to uh, forward and backward forward and backward and ultimately it will get a stationary condition this forward and backward it is very fast so your naked eyes cannot uh, identify that but yes there will be forward backward motion and then it will come to a stationary position this forward and backward motion called as a longitudinal vibration then transverse vibration basically it is because of the bending like uh, this is the cantilever and here you are applying the bending load or this force once you remove this then cantile cantilever is what in this way but your vibration or motion will be in upward direction upward downward upward downward so this is the one axis but motion is what like this hence it is called transverse you understood what is the transverse vibration perpendicular vibration perpendicular to the acting axis or reference axis you, you can consider this is the cantilever so this is your axis now but vibration is what in this way no in this way okay yes or no this is called transverse what is the torsional torsional is always because of the twisting i mean this is the case we have a disc like this okay you apply the you know that kid or we in our childhood we we had like a, you know a small small toys so that key toys if you rotate that key uh, and then if you leave that toys then that toys automatically it will go in forward direction yes or no will have a keys here yes sir if you, if you rotate this key and leave it then this toy will move in forward direction so that twisting whatever you are giving in that because of the twisting condition twisted and untwisted see it is given automatically it will give the torsional vibration i hope you understood all three type tell me there yes sir yes sir right 
so why i am telling this because it is very basic i know you guys have So your voice is breaking. Okay, so now it is fine. Now it's fine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I told you the weightage of this vibration is two marks or four marks. Okay. This is max and this is min. So for these two marks, you don't go for the one subject. It's long. It's a mechanical vibration. It's a complete one subject. In your might be semester or in mechanical engineering. So I will suggest don't go for thoroughly. Whatever important I'm telling you, you go through that only. That is more than enough. And with the help of that, all questions you can solve. No issue. And very basic question they are asking. All right. Now, uh, I told you to and fro motion. No? To and fro. This to and from motion you might be heard in your 12th standard physics that is called as a SHM, simple harmonic motion, that pendulum and all. Do you remember? The to and fro means one, uh, the center point or you can say it is uh, or origin you can say, okay, and we'll have a pendulum motion to and fro like this. Yes or no? So for that, yes, we, sir. Have to, uh, we will write the equation, okay, that SHM equation means simple harmonic equation. So if you write that, then you may get this one. Uh, you can write directly, you write SHM, simple harmonic, no need to do it, derivation and all, because already uh, you have done in your uh, 12th standard. But still, if you want, then this is what, this sinusoidal, what is this? This is the two and four plus minus plus minus to and from motion no first uh, positive negative positive negative positive negative means it is what to and from motion so this is the SHM so this you can write a equation is equal to x sine theta or sine theta is omega t also you can write simple theta is the angular displacement it is angular velocity so x is equal to x sine omega t, you can write. This is the equation of the uh, this sinusoidal wave. No? And then you can write x dot, you may get this uh, omega cos omega t, no? the sine omega t, cos omega t, and omega again you may get. Again x dot, then you may get this. If you take this side, then it will be x double dot uh, plus w square sine omega t is equal to zero. X double dot plus omega square, okay, into that uh, equation, X. 
take this value, this is nothing but x is equal to 0. What is the mean of it? Meaning is this x double dot. Okay, x is the displacement or you can say displacement or distance. Okay, or distance. Depends. It's still a better. x dot is x by t means it is velocity. x double dot if I'm saying then it is Velocity by time. What is the velocity by time? It is acceleration. Yes or no? Say yes or no. So if I say x yes, double sir. dot, uh, x double dot means acceleration, and x means it is displacement or distance. Okay. So now sir, a dot is nothing but differentiation with respect to time. Ah, yes, dot means differentiation with respect to time. That's the meaning of dot. No? So now this is the standard format to write any uh, SHM for any object. Any object uh, which is performing SHM, simple harmonic motion, then this is the standard format. Okay. This is the standard format equation of SHM. What is the standard format? X double dot. <coughs> Sorry x double dot plus w square x always remember w is the angular velocity okay angular velocity radian per second this can also be written as in in terms of hertz if the frequency is what hertz then what you will say this is the this is the frequency also why i am saying frequency because I told you W is equal to 2 pi F. So angular velocity is directly proportional to frequency which only constant will come, right? So you can say W is directly proportional to frequency. So it depends, you have to check the frequency. If this W frequency is given radian per second, then you say it is angular velocity. If that value, uh, unit is given hertz, Hz, no? hertz, then you say it is frequency. No need to get any kind of confusion. That frequency only will tell you. Now you understood that is standard format of the SHM, simple harmonic motion. What is the standard format? That x double dot plus w square x is equal to zero. That's all. Done. If it is free vibration, it will be zero. If it is force vibration, so something you may get right side. But for free vibration, this is the standard equation. Should I go for next? Yes, sir. Okay. Now see the spring. <coughs> you can check this spring. Uh, we type two types of connection. We have three types basically ladder connection also. One is series, one is parallel, another is series and parallel both. Just like resistance or capacitor you have seen your 12th standard physics. So same thing here we have. So spring is what in series. So series in the sense see. This is the fixed point. So this spring will be considered as a series because one end is what finished. Another end of the spring is what is started. One end is what finished here. See, this is the point. You just say this is one and this is two. And this is two and this is what three. So for a spring two, initial point is what two. For a spring one, ending point is two. So ending point and initial point will be same. If it is same, then it is called a series spring okay so now this spring now both spring are in series now i want to write equivalent this is the equivalent okay so i just want to e write equivalent so that equivalent will be ke just i want to check if equivalent spring is what ke for k1 and for k2 then what will be the result for that i mean some relation we said we should get na? between K1 and K2, if I want to write equivalent, then I want to write that result. Okay, we'll see. Now for this spring, obviously if you apply load in downward direction, huh, F force you applied. So deformation in this spring will be delta one and deformation in this spring will have a delta two. What is the total deformation? It is delta, so delta one plus delta two. Hmm? I told you, if suppose this is the one spring, okay? 
and this spring is what k and here deformation is what x so what is the restoring force it will be f is equal to k into x i mean spring stiffness into deformation so for this is spring stiffness k1 and delta 1 is the deformation so you can write that uh, value and and obviously one thing is very thing a very common what is the common thing that load for the both springs it is same i mean mass m is the mass but if you write weight then it must be uh, same hmm? it must be same for uh, the both okay yes or no like uh, for both yes, sir. That, that weight or mass will be a uh, same now so i will write the uh, deformation total deformation so i i can say uh, now this delta is the total deformation for this system okay uh, for this system so what is the f f will be ke into delta yes or no ke into uh, delta yes sir so what will be the delta it will be f upon ke k for uh, for this one so similarly for delta 1 what is the delta 1 it will be f uh, instead of f it is the mass mass in the sense weight if i write what is the weight force so you can say m into g so i am not writing m and g simply i am saying uh, force downward force so delta 1 will be f1 divided by k1 because force or mass will be same so i am not writing f1 f2 similarly delta 2 it will be f upon k2 agree with me yes sir you write all the value delta is equal to f by k so this is f by k delta 1 f by k1 f by k1 delta 2 f by k2 f by k2 f f f you can remove so automatically k you may get what is the k it is k1 k2 divided by k1 plus k2 this is the equivalent spring of the series connection hope you understood this you understood or not dear yes sir okay in terms of resistance do you remember it it was series resistance or parallel resistance exact opposite of this sir in huh. series it will be summation ha huh. so uh, in parallel it will be uh, yeah. product so yes yes it is opposite so spring connection and resistance connection it will be opposite but capacitor and uh, spring connection must be same hope you understood because resistance in parallel if you calculate uh, suppose uh, this see this is the resistance no this is the ending point initial point point 1 and 2 here resistance is what r1 here it was r2 both connection are parallel if i said what is the r equivalent then you had calculated r1 r2 divided by r1 plus r2 parallel so resistance parallel and spring series both are same means connection is what just opposite to each other anything you can remember it's your choice you 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 might be remember the derivation i will suggest don't go for derivation you just simply rem uh, remember the one thing like okay connection of the springs are just opposite to the uh, resistance connection whatever result was in series resistance connection the same result you may get parallel spring connection and what was the result of parallel resistance connection you may get the same result in case of series uh, series spring that's all done yes yes sir all right most of the student i think they are watching recorded videos also i am right brini uh yes sir okay so for them also i am saying any kind of problem you may get in 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 vibration so any question if you have then you can uh, share that question after the like once i finish the vibration because i told you main vibration is one subject so many many numerical are available 
for uh, many many uh, kind of different different uh, types of the question like for series uh, springs parallel springs and free vibration force vibration damper without damper so many questions are available so i will suggest like what i am teaching you focus on that uh, part only because it is one book if you check vibration in library so you may get one complete book mechanical vibration and it is like more than 200 pages so that full book you don't have to go through it selected topics you have to go and you practice the numerical uh, from that selected topic only for your choice for your interest if you want to practice another or different different numerical also if you are facing problem you send me i will give the solution also no problem but i will suggest like whatever topic i am touching the same topics numerical you have to touch okay so in 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 that way within 10 hours you can finish your vibration otherwise it will take more time okay anyway this is the <clears throat> parallel connection check parallel connection here this is the uh, one end okay and this is the another end this is the mass suppose okay so for mass same spring one spring here k1 and another spring k2 so here also and here also it is common i mean if you check this connection is like this because here connection must be same so this is same here both connect connected for the same body so it is same so at the same in two connection two different different spring connection you are getting at the same point it is called parallel this is what parallel i told you here parallel resistance check see same point will have a two connection so it is called parallel connection all right so this is the parallel now how do we solve parallel it's very common hmm? like very simple also whatever the deflection you may get here the same deflection you may get here also if it is balanced this mass is what balanced so whatever the deformation or deflection you may get here you may get here also same so now how to how to derive this uh, so like previous one if you go for the previous check total mass if you write f is equal to it will be uh, i mean f is the restoring force you can write so like a uh, i mean equivalent total force equivalent so this two spring you have converted into single and it is like this one so here what is the force f f is equal to k into total deflection and what is the f1 you may get it is k1 into delta 1 what is f2 k2 into delta 2 but f1 f2 f all three are same so you can write f is equal to k1 delta 1 plus k2 delta 2 okay now if you do that and this is the ke delta so delta 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 everywhere same so what you may get ke is equal to k1 plus k2 it's your common analysis only this is the result now what is the important this derivation is important what is the important the final do you have to remember another thing can we the same connection can we write in this way that is the one question arising here okay the same same uh, connection parallel connection of the spring can we uh, like uh, uh, give this connection can we give connection like this is it possible sir in one uh, the first condition where both springs are on the same side the deformation will be same sir Okay. But in the other one, it will be exact opposite. So, like, if one deflects x, the other one will deflect by minus x. Huh. Okay, A magnitude wise, must be same? Magnitude will be same. Yes, correct. Magnitude will be same. Now, the thing is, uh, in, in another way also, you can understand, like, uh, the same mass. Okay, as you said, one one side if it will go this side. So what is the deflection? You you may get it will be positive or it will be suppose negative compression, but at the same time we'll have a tensile here plus it will elongate and it will compress. But that amount must be same. 
and here also the formation you are getting same check so it means this and this the overall uh, will be same so the same parallel connection okay sometimes you may get uh, this connection like this or directly you may get this don't think this is what series because this diagram and this diagram is it seems a very common diagram it seems this diagram this diagram and this diagram it seems very common so don't get confused here or else i will tell you another uh, example to understand this simple you just uh, this is the mass you hold this mass and and uh, stretch this mass if you hold this mass and stretch then how it will looks like it will looks like this check oh, sorry it will looks like this yes or no if you hold this mass and stretch in this direction then this mass will look like this or not tell me yes sir so this diagram is nothing yes. but this yes sir ah then this way also you can understand there should not be any confusion yes or no yes sir ah so if it is parallel then it will be added it's just like a series resistance you might be have remember 12th standard physics so this is the series resistance no r1 r2 so yes sir what, if if i say what is the equivalent of this then you may say r equivalent is equal to r1 plus r2 because some current will be same hence it will be added so series resistance result will be equal to parallel uh, springs connection done yes sir done sir all right so uh, now this we have uh, the uh, spring uh, mass spring mechanics uh, mechanism so you just draw this diagram for this diagram i don't know where it is removed or one page is got removed actually this derivation is for this system this is the one complete system this is the spring and this is the mass okay so for this the diagram uh, for this derivation you please draw the diagram uh, separately it was there i don't know where how it is removed so this is what is spring this is the mass and if you apply load downwards it will have a deformation x in downward done so this is the diagram okay so if i say what is the restoring force of the spring so you have to say f is equal to kx okay what is the f f is nothing but mass it is it is the force and unit is newton so newton is nothing but mg mg is equal to kx so k divided by m is equal to g divided by x understand tell me dear yes sir right. yes sir okay i will write kinetic energy for the mass system tell me any kinetic energy for the spring any kinetic energy for the spring no sir no what, what is the kinetic energy kinetic energy means a body will move from one place to another place so that spring is not going to move from one place to another place what wh what part is what going to move from one place to another place this mass mass system maybe elongation will come then mass will get this position maybe na maybe get this position mass so mass is what going to move from here to here so always remember okay this mass and spring mechanism you always remember mass will have a kinetic energy so you can write kinetic energy of mass how to write kinetic energy of mass what is the any for any mass system what is the kinetic energy half mv square it is half mv square very good 1 by 2 mass into v what is the v if distance or displacement is what x then x dot, x dot. 
x dot will be velocity and square half m x square. All right. Yes, yes sir. No? Okay. Why it is going to be a negative value? Because uh, there is a loss in the uh, kinetic energy of the mass. Okay. Why it is lost? It's very simple. Because whenever you will apply the load, okay, so it will go down when you apply the load, but again it will be restored by the spring. It will be restored by the spring. So for spring, it will have a positive energy that is restoring energy. Okay. But at the same time, that mass will uh, will lose the kinetic energy because it will get kinetic energy because of the applied force. But once you remove the force, then automatically it will regain its position. Hence, it is losing kinetic energy, that mass I'm saying. So that it will have a negative sign here. You understood or not there? Yes, sir. Because once you apply the load, see, simple thing, suppose one block you, uh, you have in your hand and you are going to throw that block. But uh, somebody is there and you, and behind you and he or she is going to hold your hand. So what uh, kinetic energy should get that block by your hand, that same kinetic energy it will not get. Why? Because someone is what going to hold your hand from backside. You understood? Yes. So spring is like that only because spring will try to hold, get uh, hold and it, it will try to get back that mass system in upward direction. So finally, mass system will, will lose the kinetic energy. I hope you understood. It is like, okay, you are freely, you are, uh, suppose you are preparing gate and uh, last month you are having so much uh, headache and all because you have not revised properly. So you are freely, you are, don't try it, but I'm saying you freely, you are going to uh, hit your head on the wall. Okay. And you are running from one side to another side and you are going to freely hit on uh, head on the wall and someone is your there behind you like your brothers your sister or your parents someone is what going to hold from backside so whatever whatever the like a stroke you should get on your head that you may not get why because someone is what going to hold from backside you got my point now yes sir all right yes sir yeah don't try now so obviously you may have that less kinetic energy compared comparatively so that's the reason we are getting minus sign but now what about uh, the energy in in case of the spring so this spring will have a potential energy because it is a static condition but it whatever the kinetic energy it is going to increase or decrease in uh, mass system so the same energy will be because energy cannot generate or cannot in you know that okay it can transfer from one part to another part like whatever the kinetic energy you are getting in the mass system it is because of the uh, the same energy will be stored in uh, a spring also but uh, that that because the spring is a stationary condition hence that energy will be in form of potential energy that's the mean of it so that if you for the total system if you write the energy then it will be uh, total energy which is called kinetic energy plus potential energy for the system i'm saying for the system if i say system means spring and mass both so in spring you may have a kinetic energy and in uh, sorry in mass you will have a kinetic energy and in spring you may have a potential energy okay and potential energy of the spring, it is half kx square. This is the one derivation. With the derivation, you may get this, okay? Half kx square. But I will suggest you remember, like for the spring, potential energy will be half kx square. And, and don't confuse, this is kinetic, like you may relate to half mv square here, half kx square. Kinetic, no, this is the potential energy of the spring. For the spring, we don't have any kinetic energy, always only potential energy. So I will suggest potential energy for the spring you remember. Actually, half kx square is the one derivation, but I am not going to derive because it is the waste of time. Okay, You just remember it is half kx square, potential energy of the spring. It is the derivation, but no, no need to derive. You just remember half kx square. What is k? It is spring stiffness 
what is x it is the deformation or deflection or displacement all right now so this is the potential energy this is can what is the total energy obviously it must be constant this total energy also called as a mechanical energy okay mechanical energy must be constant so total energy will be sum of both and, and this total energy is for the system system means mass and spring so for mass it is kinetic energy for spring it is potential energy sum is equal to constant any constant differentiation will be zero you know that no 12th standard mathematics any constant differentiation will be zero you differentiate that energy and make it equal to zero so you differentiate so kinetic energy if you differentiate 1 by 2 mass is constant it is the x dot if you differentiate then what you may get i will write here 1 by 2 m if you differentiate with respect to time then it you may have x double dot square agree yes sir yes sir okay plus 1 by 2 k into x square if you differentiate with respect to uh, time can you differentiate with respect to time i think uh, you just uh, correct this uh, this derivation i was in very hurry and made mistake you can write in this check so it will be very clear it will be 1 by 2 m okay this is the <clears throat> x dot square okay already square is there now if you want to differentiate then what you may get two times x dot into x double dot agree with me yes so and now it is correct check because it is the and for this square ha huh, yes yes x dot is square hence you will write two x dot and x dot again differentiation you have to do then x it is x double dot actually i was hurry so i made mistake but now it is corrected only check it is correct or not yes sir it is correct. yes sir answer answer for the second term it will be 1 by 2k ah. into 2 into x dot into x yes 2x into x dot yes or yes. no agree is yes sir ha huh, equal to zero now you may check x dot we have here x dot we have here you remove it 1 by 2m 1 by 2 not m 1 by 2 1 by 2 so you may have m mx double dot plus kx is equal to zero check agree yes sir okay now <clears throat> again this is okay i mean for this spring system for this spring system you got uh, the uh, shm equation and this is the shm equation for that but we had already original equation what was the original equation if you remember it was x double dot plus w square x is equal to 0 yes or no standard shm equation check this one x double dot plus w square x x double dot plus w square x yes or no a standard equation can you compare yes, the standard equation ah if you want to compare this standard equation then you have to write this in this format so i will write this it is x double dot plus it is k by m into x is equal to zero now it is uh, same one now omega is square is equal to k by m right right so you can compare this so all right you can write this so it is w square is equal to k by m or w is equal to k by m this is the natural frequency of the spring mass system you have seen might be w is equal to root k by n 
so this is the frequency actually this is the angular velocity it's depend i told you it depends if it is given radian per second then it will be a, a angular velocity or if you write frequency then f is equal to w by 2 pi no? so it will be 1 upon 2 pi root of k by m so this will be in hertz this will be in radian per second you understood so for the spring mechan mass system this is the frequency in, in hertz 1 by 2 pi uh, root of k by m and angular velocity in radian per second it is root k by m up to here today up to here it is clear yes sir okay so we'll continue this i think two three lectures required for the vibration in short no three lectures i need so i'm sure once i will finish three lectures so all questions you may crack all right and you guys keep revising i am trying to take alternate class sometimes regular sometimes alternate if i am saying alternate it means i am giving time to you guys to revise the previous topic that is important because i told you that time like if continuously going to cover the topics new new chapters but we are not revising previous chapters then it is completely useless i suggested already like don't if it it is not necessary toppers view also if you go then it is not like 100% completion of the sub subjects 100% uh, syllabus completion is required no it is not at all from our side we'll give 100% but for it's your choice you you are concentrating 80% 75% or 90% syllabus it's your choice so you, uh, according to your uh, energy according to your endeavors you choose that like okay 80% i will prepare i will skip this subject i will skip this chapter it's your choice so for that reason i am saying don't go for the all topics like whatever the topics you are thinking okay it is complicated or it is going uh, above my head so don't touch that topic it's okay because you have 65 question i calculation i had given many times and those who are watching recorded video also for them also i am saying again total we have a 65 question okay for 100 marks and in 180 minutes you know 180 minutes okay I will suggest you if you go on correctly only 40, 40 question also if you are going then still you may have more than 60 marks and more than 60 marks means you are below 50 50 rank below 50 or under 50 rank very simple so selection is done only 40 question correctly if you are doing that is your selection is already done no doubt about it okay it is very clear thing i am telling you if 25 question two two marks you have done uh, and uh, rest one one marks also if you do then more than enough so 40 to 45 question must be your uh, minimum target 40 to 45 question out of 65 so just think out of 65 if you are going to hit 40 questions so 25 question you have option to skip that if you are planning 40 to 45 question so time margin also you may get more because for 65 question if you go for 180 minutes you may get might be three minutes for one question or less than three minutes 2.71 something but if you go for four uh, 40 question only so you may get more than four minutes 4.5 something so that time margin also you may get so very good planning is required for the competitive exam i, I always uh, tell like this okay like preparation is one side and your good planning is what another side okay so preparation with good planning is better side actually some people they are having a good preparation they have revised well but they are not planning well so in that time also in three hours you might be made some uh, mistakes uh, so automatically you may lose the marks you, your rank will go down hmm? so planning is very important for the competition and now this is the correct time to plan everything because you have one and a half month right so need to plan like okay what chapter i want to revise four times five times what chapter i want to revise only one time if question simple question i will get then i will solve otherwise i will skip that with that mindset you have to go don't go for like okay 165 question i have to do 100 marks i want to uh, hit no uh, always toppers marks you know 65 70 75 that is if toppers is what getting 75 
it means he is not going to try for 100 marks he is not going to correct 65 marks uh, 65 question so it's a very simple calculation here you are getting my point or not yes sir yeah so make a good plan in your in, in your mind don't be panicked like okay time is very less i have not revised anything nothing like that i will suggest you only three subjects you are preparing well you can you can get good good uh, uh, score in your gate very simple out of five uh, five subjects are major subjects right out of five five subjects are like okay i will write here aerodynamics aero structure okay uh, propulsion if i say propulsion means jet and rocket both and uh, performance yes or no and what is the another aero structure propulsion and uh, performance you can say and uh, then uh, next is what you can say uh, that uh, subject is math or space dynamics sir. Ah, no space dynamics is only two marks major subject i am saying major subject okay so any three subjects only if you choose you can take a stability okay yeah, stability also performance and stability is what combined actually so any any like uh, three subjects if you go you can uh, get good question collection no doubt about it because many times it happens like aero getting uh, 12 marks structure getting maybe 15 marks or 12 to 15 propulsion is what like 12 to 15 so if you add all three then automatically you your marks uh, will be more than uh, 40 or uh, 45 something and then if you uh, out of uh, 25 marks aptitude and math 20 marks you are getting then automatically 60 marks you reached only three subjects core three subjects and math and ft if you do properly you can get a nearby 50 60 marks very easily okay i will say like uh, uh, you are getting suppose just for example aero 10 marks structure 10 marks propulsion propulsion means jet propulsion and rocket propulsion 10 i will sure like propulsion is more than 10 i am sure pro structure is more than 10 i am sure aero also more than 10 but i am considering least 10 10 10 it is 10 10 10 30 marks okay math and ft you are getting suppose 20 marks correctly total 50 100 percent selection 100 percent selection you may get 50 marks more than enough so i'm not saying going go and uh, skip the performance maybe someone have a choice to uh, practice performance so they are taking performance propulsion and aero they are going to skip a structure I'm not saying like you skip it. It's your choice. I'm just saying like, okay, the plan, how to plan, how to set up everything in your mind. I'm telling you how it is very simple to get 50 marks. That is my intention to tell. I'm not saying like you skip any subject or don't prepare. No, whatever you can prepare, you please prepare. Give your 100%. But I'm saying like, I am just, I'm going to dilute your mind. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not, going to pressurize you or I'm not going to panicking you. I'm just dilute your mind. Like I'm, I just want to tell you, it is very simple only. Don't get panic. Don't take overburden on your head. Uh, that's my intention. I'm just saying you like how simply you can get 50 marks and 50 marks means 100% selection. That is true. Any IIT you may get. You plan there, okay? Should I stop now? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.